I've got a stock original Xbox version 1.6 here, and I'd like to install Make Megahertz's Xbox HD Plus into it. The Xbox HD Plus is gonna have some advanced features that will only be available if you use a mod chip like this Open Xenium. So let's go through the process of installing this Open Xenium mod. The first step is to take the motherboard out of the case. Once we have the board out of the case, let's take a look at this LPC header right here. This LPC port can be used by a mod chip to allow a custom BIOS to be run on the original Xbox. But on the 1.6 version of the Xbox, Microsoft actually removed some of the connections on this header in order to prevent people from using mod chips on their Xboxes. However, there's this LPC rebuild QSB that actually adds those signals back onto that debug header, which allows mod chips like the Open Xenium to work in a 1.6 Xbox. First things first, we're gonna put this pin header in the top side of it here and then I'm going to use some captain tape just to hold it down and then we'll flip the board over and then the QSB is going to go over those headers on the other side First things first, let's solder all of the header pins to the QSB. Start with one of these pins on the LPC And once we have one, I'm gonna hold up on the header on the back here and just try to get the QSB and the header as flat as possible. Once we're happy with one end, let's go ahead and do the other end down here. And we're gonna kind of do the same thing, hold up on the header underneath and push that QSB as flat down as we can go. Okay, now we should be able to solder all the rest of the header pins. Now we can go around the edge and solder the remaining points. Okay, now this LPC rebuild QSB is installed. Flip the board back over and remove our tape. And now we can go ahead and install the Open Xenium chip onto this header. There's gonna be one more set of pins on this LPC than there are on this header for the Open Xenium. So we're actually gonna mount this to the left on the LPC. The only thing left to do is solder a wire between this D0 pad here and the pad there to the left that says 1.6. So I'm gonna tin both of these and solder a small wire between that D0 pad and the pad to the left there.
Okay, wow, I had the mod backwards. The mod needs to be facing this way or else your Xbox is not gonna boot correctly. Now let's go test it out. Let's go ahead and start the Xbox. And if your mod is installed correctly, you'll be greeted to this Xenium OS. Xenium is a bootloader that can be used for a bunch of different things, but we're gonna use it to load a custom BIOS on our Xbox. I'm gonna be installing the Evo X M8 Plus BIOS. While we're at the Xenium screen, go down to settings and go to network settings. I have my Xbox connected to my network using an ethernet cable. So you'll see the dynamic IP that I have here here, so we want to keep that handy. If you're wondering why there's a bunch of vertical lines on the screen, that's because there's a bug in the latest Xenium OS that's causing them. In the future, we're not going to be using Xenium that much, so it doesn't bother me, but if it does bother you, you can always switch to using composite video. I don't think those vertical lines are present. Over here on my computer, I'm gonna be following this Xbox HD Plus software installation guide. We've already done step one by turning on the Xbox. So the next thing that we're gonna need is to download this Xbox HD app. Let's extract this Xbox HD from the zip file and then we'll come back to that in a second. The next step is to FTP those files we just downloaded over to our Xbox. I like to use FileZilla for FTP. Now go ahead and type that IP address that we saw in Xenium and the FTP username and password are both just Xbox. Then go ahead and click Quick Connect and now you can see that we're FTP'd into our Xbox. Go ahead and expand the C drive. Now we're gonna go to that Xbox HD folder that we extracted earlier, and we're gonna copy Xbox HD into the C drive. Our next steps are to find an M8 Plus BIOS and patch it with a custom kernel patch. I can't help you find an M8 Plus BIOS, unfortunately, but I can tell you that once you do find one, you can check the MD5 checksum against this list that make megahertz has prepared. For example, I found an M8 Plus 1.6 BIOS because I have a 1.6 Xbox, Box. Then I use this command line tool to generate an MD5 hash from the file that I found. If the MD5 hash that that command gives you matches this checksum, then you know you have a untampered with BIOS that you can use on your Xbox. Once we have a legit M8 Plus BIOS, the next thing that we're going to need is this IPS patch. Go ahead and stick that in the folder for the BIOS that you found. Next, we're going to need a program called EV Tool. Go ahead and click this unpack button. Find the BIOS that you downloaded. For me, it's this M8 Plus 16. Again, that's for my one. 1.6 version Xbox and double click it. Next, we're gonna use a program called Lunar IPS. Click Apply IPS Patch and we're gonna select that kpatcher.ips file that we downloaded earlier. Next, we need to find a kernel image that the EV tool just created, but we need to switch this from most common ROM files to all files. And now this kernel.img file will show up. Go ahead and select that. And it says the file was successfully patched. Back in EV tool, go ahead and click pack, select that kernel image. And then we're gonna select the original BIOS file that we used. So for me, it's this M8 plus 16. And finally, we're gonna give this patched BIOS a name, something like M8 plus underscore 16 underscore patched and click save. Back in FileZilla, let's create a new folder in our C drive on our Xbox and we'll call it BIOS. And let's copy our newly patched BIOS into that BIOS folder. Finally, we can go back to Xenium and under launch menu, click add an item, select flash and the C drive. Under our new BIOS folder, we'll select our patched BIOS. Just keep the name that it's given. There's some color options here. I think this is for a custom LEDs, but I'll just select green. And it added our BIOS to this screen. We'll go down and hit set default item and select this patch BIOS. Press B to go back out to the main Xenium menu and go down to settings, Xenium settings, and turn instant boot on. Now we can go ahead and restart the Xbox to see if we can boot into that patched BIOS. As we boot into the Xbox, you'll see this Evo X icon in the corner. That indicates that we have a custom BIOS running on our Xbox, but you'll see that we're booted into the stock Xbox dashboard. At this point, we have a couple of options. If you were interested, now's the time to add a new hard drive using a SATA to IDE converter. You could add a one terabyte hard drive and have a huge amount of storage for your emulators and games. Using a utility like Hexen, you could easily set up that new hard drive, including a custom dashboard, which is what we need to access the Xbox HD app. For the purposes of this video, or if you just wanted to use the stock hard drive and your disc games with your Xbox HD, I have a simpler process that we can use to add a custom dashboard on our stock hard drive. Go ahead and restart the Xbox and boot into Xenium by pressing the eject button instead of the power button. This will let us FTP back into our Xbox again. I found an interesting post on Reddit that mentions that most modified BIOSes attempt to run a dashboard called evox-.xbe the first time the Xbox is started. Our custom BIOS installation did not 
not add any files like that to our Xbox. However, if we were able to find a custom dashboard like Unleash X and copy the default.xpe as well as the config.xml into the C drive of our Xbox and then rename default.xpe to evox-.xpe, we have now added a custom dashboard to our stock Xbox hard drive. Now we can go ahead and power off the Xbox and turn it back on again using the normal power button. Instead of the stock dashboard, we're greeted with the Unleash X dashboard. But we're now able to access that Xbox HD app. We go down to the file explorer, enter the C drive, go into the Xbox HD folder and click on this default.xpe. We can load the Xbox HD app. Here you can see the Xbox HD software version as well as whether or not that kernel patch was detected. It indicates that Xbox HD Plus was not detected, which is fine because we haven't installed that Xbox HD mod yet. And that's all it takes to access this Xbox HD app on a completely stock Xbox, including our Open Xenium. I was a little disappointed that the Open Xenium software installation did not mention anything about needing a custom dashboard, but I talked with Dustin from Make Megahertz on Discord, and he said that a prerequisite to this mod was to have an already modded Xbox including things like custom dashboard and a new hard drive. I recommend booting up into a game to make sure that your Xbox is still working correctly at this point. Thanks for watching this video, and if it helped you install your Open Xenium in preparation for an Xbox HD+, give this video a like. And get subscribed so you don't miss my video about installing the Xbox HD+, into this Xbox. I'll see you in the next video.